This is the forklift simulator prototype, and we're going to talk about how the physics were implemented for the forklift behavior. Quick demo, I uh, use this lever to turn off the handbrake. I use this one, um, I pull it, uh, pull the trigger and then move my hand forward to put it in drive. And then I can uh, grab the steering wheel, turn it around, and I will now drive by applying uh, the right uh, paddle. We can, of course, also control uh, the fork, which is pretty important on a forklift. Uh, we do this, do this by uh, handling, by uh, using these three levers. Uh, first one was the same mechanism, of course, uh, moving your hand and then gripping it. It's uh, moving it up or down. I'm just gonna, uh, yeah. Uh, the second one is tilting it forwards or backwards. Uh, the third one you can is actually see it has the standard the fork uh, left, left or unity. Right. Dropping your pallet as hard as it is now with these settings is actually a hazard you can fail in the prototype. But because we want you to still get to the end, the pallet spawns back on your fork after two seconds. Uh, we based ourselves on, on uh, the, the default car control and car package that Unity bundles with its editor. If I go to the forklift code and, and, and connected physics, which is they have a car user control and a car control script, which does the main things, and they use those four wheel colliders, which you can see are matched to the size of the wheels. We did spend some time in getting everything right. So because the, the back wheels turn instead of the front wheels for a normal car, we had to reverse it. And then the, the, all the settings for the suspension and the weight and stuff, that's just a lot of trying. It's hard to tune exactly how you want it. When you pick up a pallet, there is actually a physics object with a collider on your fork that will influence the physics of the, of the forklift. I added also a bit of stabilizing. So yeah, the two colliders of the of the wheels, like the back wheels, are interconnected so that they're a bit more stable and the same for the front wheels. That's actually what it does. The default example is that they, they, there's just four four colliders and they have their influence on the car. Um, the, the script I added just makes sure that they are interconnected in a way. It gets some parameters from the, the left wheel and from the right wheel and then calculates an anti-roll force based on those two and then dampens them both a bit. It averages a bit out and makes sure there aren't too many extremes in the distances of the wheels compared to each other. One of the things to talk about is nausea. If you're in VR, people get nauseated quickly, especially if you're moving without actual movement in real life. So the idea was to reduce the accelerations. So we said, okay, let's add a force in the other way that simulates your body movement. For example, if you accelerate fast, your, your, your body moves backward, hit the brake, your body moves forwards a little bit, which actually dampens the acceleration so you don't have so heavy accelerations. And also if you drive in circles, I mean, you see if you drive in circle to the left, the camera goes more to the right. So it's pretty stable now because our acceleration is, is basically constant. But if I stop, you can see that it compensates to the other side. First important step is making sure we know the correct acceleration of the car. And then based on that, on every time step, we calculate the force of our head based on the current acceleration and our mass. And then we calculate the damping based on the velocity we have. What we also added, when you turn the steering wheel, it has a bit of a dampening on the speed because we wanted to avoid tipping over too easily. So if we, this is our top speed, but when we turn, you can see it slows down a bit. We tuned it so it's not that easy to get it to tip over without knocking into something or, or, or having a an, an heavy load. 